Hey everybody, today I'm going to introduce you to SEO Minion, which is a add-on for Chrome and Firefox that allows you to not only do keyword research, but also analyze the SEO and different factors of competing websites so you can get a better idea of what you need to do to outrank them. So I'm just going to do a brief overview of the tool so you can uh, see if it's right for you and you can download it and play with it. This is 100% free. I did mention this tool in my video on the five free keyword research tools that you can use um, and this one is completely free. So you'll see it up here. It'll show up in your browser as an add-on up here. So what I'm going to do is this page is, I decided just to go with this term, how to grow an avocado tree. It came out of nowhere. I love avocados. I just went with it. So say you already did some keyword research. You know this is a topic that you need to write about. You're, the first thing you should always do, guys, is come to the SERPs. Go to the search results, preferably in incognito mode, and see who's ranking. Get a feel for if you could even bother ranking. I don't look at DR, I don't look at UR, I don't look at any of those metrics that all these tools are putting out there. They don't matter. What matters is the authority of the site, how well the site's optimized, um, how many backlinks they have, things like that. So, you know, if I'm a little guy who, you know, has a 200 page website and, you know, I'm just doing it as an affiliate, I probably wouldn't want to target this term because I have better homes and gardens ranking, good housekeeping, the spruce. In Habitat. These are all big players that I probably would not beat. I'd have to do something pretty damn amazing and I just don't see it happening. But for today's presentation, I'm just going to go ahead and use it. So I type in my keyword. I see all my competition. The first thing you're going to notice is this little guy here. This is your SEO minion helper. So he's here to help you. We're not going to look at him right now. Um, we're going to get back to this. This is for keyword research and I love it. This is one of my favorite tools. So we'll get back to that in a minute. What I want to do first is I want to see, okay, I know I can write about this. I think I can beat BHG and Good Housekeeping and the Spruce. So what I would do is I would open all these up in different tabs, which you can see I have done up here. So let me go to the first tab, which is the Spruce. Okay. So let me just refresh this real quick. So I get a clean slate. So I am on my avocado tree growing guide written by the spruce. I have my little SEO minion here to help me. I'm going to click him. And this is what happens. We get all this data here on the right. And these are all different things that you can look at to understand whether or not if you can outrank them or if you want to help um, get some help getting your outline together for the content that you want to write. So analyze on page SEO is the first stop. This is just an overview of everything. Okay, so it's telling you what the URL is, about how many words are on the page. This is an estimate, guys. You know, every tool that tells you how many words are in a piece of content is going to give you something different. They all look at different things. Some are counting every single word on the page, some are counting content only, some are counting footer links. So just a guide. Um, I don't get married to the words, I write what I need to write to tell the story that I'm trying to tell. So just because they have 3,000 words doesn't mean you need 3,000 words. Maybe you could do 2,000 or 2,500 if you have more authority and you do a, a damn good job of writing that content. So you can see what their title tag is. Um, you can see what their description is um, and whether or not it's too long or too short or just right. Canonical meta robots, I'm not going to talk about, but you can see those. You can sort by type and in, for the headings and now this is one of my favorite things because what this does it shows you how the site is breaking down their content so you can see what the header one is you can see all the h2 tags you can see the h3s sitting nicely under the h2s so this can really help you define how you want to write your content it's going to give you a really great idea for an outline you can actually download this so what I would recommend, you know, we take our three sites, we create a new spreadsheet, we have three columns, and each column we add the um, different H1s and H2s. That way you can look side by side at all three and get an idea, you know, what elements do you have to have? You know, if there's some that all three have, like if all three are talking about pruning, you know you need to be talking about pruning. So really great way to get ideation for your content outline. It's going to tell you about how many images. There was not 25 images in the post. There might be 25 images on the page, but not in the post. This is just a guide. I would never add 25 images in a post unless I was a photographer or an artist. So um, just 
grain of salt, but it's good to know. It's going to tell you if there's images without alt text. So if you see a page that has 20 images and none of them have alt text, that's an opportunity for you. So those are the kinds of things you want to look at. Then you've got your open graph, um, what they're serving up on Facebook, what they're serving up on Twitter. Okay, so that is step one. Then you run through and you can see their links. Now, why is this important? You can see their internal and their external. So right now it's marked for external. Okay, so if we scroll down the page, like up here, you can see this green highlight for Instagram. That's an external link. We can see in the footer, these are all external links. And these are all, oh, we're showing all of them. So we can see just no follow links if we want. Okay, so they don't use no follow on their links. Here, they're using follow. So they use follow on their social links. I always do no follow. So you can get an idea of what they're doing there. Then you can also see the internal links. Why is this helpful? Because you care about what they're linking to within their content. Okay, so if we have here common pest and plant diseases, they're linking to an internal article about thrips. Maybe you need an article about thrips because that might be something that's specific to avocados. Um, so these are all things you want to go through and look at all their internal links. Might give you content ideas, might give you ideas of what you need to link. Like terracotta, you don't necessarily need to use terracotta, but maybe it's nice to have. Maybe that's the preferred way of storing the avocado. Um, so you really should go through and look at all of these, and all of their internal links are probably follow. They should never. You should never do a no follow on your internal links. Yeah, they're all follow. Um, so this is really helpful. You can download these as well if you would like. You can check for broken links. Okay, so this will take time. I'm not going to sit here and wait for it. But if there's any broken links on the page, that will help you see, um, you know, little wins. Another thing that's really helpful for this part of the tool, backlinks for your site. So if you're looking at, you know, competing sites or other sites within your industry and you run this and you see uh, internal back, if you see backlinks or links that are broken, it could be an opportunity for you to get backlinks to your site. If you can create the content that they were linking to, ask them for a backlink, tell them, you know, hey, that link is broken, but I have that content on my site if you prefer to link to it. So that's how a lot of people use this. Um, and then you can download all this when it's done. So that's broken uh, links. And then you got your href lang tag checker. You only really need that if you're international. So I'm not going to go over that. They give you a cert preview. If you want to take a look, um, you can actually put your own information in here and preview how it would look in the search results. A location checker. This is more for um, local. So I'm not really going to cover this today since most of the people who listen to me are bloggers and local, uh, not local businesses. And this is a location checker as well. So this is the basics, uh, hugely helpful. Again, on page SEO and the links and the broken links, huge. So that is that. And then you can go through and you could do it for all the pages. So let's take a look at good housekeeping. Um, we could do this real quick and, you know, just look at the H1s and H2s. So you can see they have a lot less H2s going on than the other site had. So that might tell you you don't need as many as the first site did. You can see that their meta description is a little too long. So these are all different things that, you know, can make a bit of an impact. So that is that. Now we're going to dig into what I think is even more fun. So now I'm on how to grow an avocado tree. And my SEO minions here to help me out, teach me, you know, show me other words I can rank for. So there's a couple options here. You can do download or copy. Okay. Um, sometimes it might be easier just to download them. If it's a short list, you might want to copy them. In here is all these option guys. There's a lot to deal with here. So you can do all the organic URLs. You can actually download it, export all organic URLs. This is good if you have some kind of tool that you want to run them all through for whatever you might want to do with them. Um, all organic results, ads, products. I don't use any of these right now, um, videos, images, so I haven't really played with any of these. Um, I dig in down here. So frequently asked question URLs and data. Okay, so let's do this one real quick. I'm going to actually change this to copy, and I am going to do frequently asked questions URLs so you can see what you're getting. Copied one result. And then I am going to go to my spreadsheet. Let me just do a quick thing. And then I'm going to just do a paste because I already copied it. Okay, so you can see what it's giving me. It's giving me frequently asked questions URLs. 
that's this. So it came from the spruce. So they're telling me the spruce has frequently asked questions and I should go look at that page. If three different pages had frequently asked questions, it would, it would have been copied three results. Okay. Now I can do frequently asked data instead and watch what happens. I copied two results. So I'm going to come over here and these questions I just copied came out of these are avocado trees easy to grow and what is the lifespan of an avocado tree okay so that's these so you can do this you know and grab as much data as you want with all different terms i mean this is it, it, you're basically scraping um that's what a lot of these people are doing um scraping data so this is just a good way to grab all that data real quick give you more ideas then you can also do um, people also ask. That's what this is. So there's a couple different things here. You can do two levels, three levels, four levels. I did a three level test a few minutes ago. So I did uh, people also ask. I did a copy. I'll show you what happens when I click go. Okay. Now notice that the side here is moving. Okay. So what this is doing, it's opening up all the people also ask results. Okay, so these are all being opened and it's pulling all that data in for me. Now it's telling me there's 47 results. Okay, now I already put those in here and there should be 47. Yeah, so I, I already copied these over just to save some time. So this column, you can see this is the title of the post. This is really important because this is telling you what a parent topic might be. This is where clusters come in. So this is really helpful information. Okay, we'll go back to that in a minute. This is the text of the post. Okay, so this is the text that's coming into this section. So whatever's showing in here is what's in this spreadsheet. Pretty cool. This is the actual URL, so you can visit it if you want. And this is the title tag that is showing in the search results. So how to use this. Okay, my original term was how to grow an avocado tree. But now I have all these other questions. Okay, because these are all people also ask. So we can decide whether or not we want to use these as additional frequently asked questions, or maybe we can actually write a whole new post about it. Maybe my main topic is how to grow an avocado tree, and I have a subtopic. Um, let's see. Can I grow an avocado tree from store-bought avocados? Yeah, I don't know if that will work. Um, maybe what's the best place to plant an avocado tree this might be helpful because what will happen is maybe you can create a state chart okay this might be its own post guys you can create a list of all the states and every state might have a different you know humidity factor or you know sunlight factor and you can do a, a really killer post about all the different states and the best places in each state. Um, so this might be a really cool like digital PR lead on this one. The rest of these might just be frequently asked questions. Um, so that's how I use this. I'll go through and see, okay, can I create a post out of these as a, you know, cluster topic or, you know, can I just use them as frequently asked questions? And you can go further and you can dive further and further. So you can get four levels of information, five levels, six levels. You can go as much as you need to. So the one other thing I want to show you, okay, I want to go over this real quick. This is actually telling me when I landed on this page for how to grow an avocado tree, this is telling me my organic results. There were seven, no ad results. Nobody's bidding on the term. There's no product listings, no local listings. There was three videos. We saw those early on and you can see there's frequently asked data. So it's telling you what's in the search results. So if you see here that there's 10 product listings, you don't want to try and do an informational post. It's not going to work. Um, so this is really helpful information to help you understand what type of content Google is looking for. The last thing is view people also ask tree. And I love this. So this is all of these broken out into a nice visual for you. So you can take all this information, how to grow an avocado tree. Okay. Maybe we can do a post. How long does it take to grow an avocado tree? Can they grow in pots? Can they? So these are all, it's just kind of showing you how you might be able to create a parent-child situation amongst all these different topics. And that's it. So you have now seen SEO Minion. Now please go download it and you go have yourself a great day. Thanks guys. Any questions, let me know. If you need me to clarify anything, glad to do so.
just leave a message in the comments. Thanks. Have a great day.